Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Uh, today we're doing another little tutorial. Haven't done one of these in a while. Today we're looking at color grading in Premiere Pro. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can use Lumetri Color in Premiere Pro to color grade your videos. And to do this, I'm gonna show you how I color grade my YouTube videos. One important note before we start, this is usually a two-step process. You have color correction and then color grading. Now color correction is the first initial edit to your clip where you're making little adjustments to get the footage to look correct and have all of your different clips match each other. Then the color grade is where you add your stylistic effects, uh, like your teal and orange look or adding more saturation, contrast, that kind of thing. Now what I'm going to do today is kind of a combination of both, where I'm going to be sort of correcting things and also doing a light grade. Usually you would break these into two separate steps, but because we're talking about grading a YouTube video and I don't have any other shots I have to color match for this because it's all just me sitting here talking, I don't need to worry too much about it, I just need to get it looking the way I want. So open up Premiere and grab your clip. I got my example footage right here and I'm just going to drag this first step right onto the timeline. So once you have your clip in your timeline, you're going to click on it to select it, go over to the effects window and type in Lumetri Color. And you get this one little video effect right here. Now just drag and drop that onto your clip. And you'll see there's a bunch of different windows here. We're gonna go through some of them. So to start is basic correction. So these are just your basic edits like temperature, contrast, exposure, highlights, shadows, that kind of thing. I actually don't usually like to use the basic correction settings because we can accomplish all of these things within the curve section. Next is our creative section. This is where you would select a LUT if you wanted to apply one. Now a LUT stands for a lookup table. It's basically just a preset. And LUTs are actually a great starting point for your video. You should never just drop a LUT on and leave that as your color grade. But if you want, you can always start with a LUT and then turn down the intensity of that LUT, say to maybe 50% and then edit the footage based on what that LUT is already doing. But for the sake, we're gonna go with none. Then you also have some creative effects like faded film look and saturation. Now we got the curves tab. This is the important one. This is what we're gonna focus on. Now there's a lot of curve graphs here, but we're gonna focus on this first one first. So this is just your standard curves adjustment. Now the right side of the graph over here represents the brightest parts of the image and the left side represents the darkest parts. You can click anywhere on this line to add a point and then move that point up and down. So if you add a point near the top and then bring it up, you're going to be bringing up the bright parts of the image. If you add a point near the left and bring it down, you're gonna be bringing down the dark parts of the image. So what I've done here is brought up my skin tones just a little bit, brought up the lighter parts of the shadows, like the brighter parts of this black hoodie here, and then added another point on the line there so that my dark parts of the image stay dark. Now we have our versus curves. We're starting with hue versus saturation. So the first object, in this case the hue, is telling you how you're going to be selecting the parts of your image and then the second part here is going to be telling you what you are changing about the image. So hue versus saturation means I'm selecting areas of the image based on what color they are and then choosing if I want them to be more saturated or less saturated. I specifically like the hue versus saturation because I can use it to bring the red tones in my face closer to the more orangish tones of the rest of my face and get rid of kind of like the blemishes on my face pretty easily that way. So we are going to be adjusting the colors in between these two points, which is going to be roughly the skin tone here. And then once I have these two points, I'm gonna add a third one in the middle and just desaturate the red in this image. But if we look over at my preview here, you can see like my, my lips turn gray there. That would be too far but I'm going to do this just a little bit. Now we go down to hue versus hue. So again, the first word here, hue, is deciding what part of the image we're going to be selecting. And then the second word, which again, in this case is hue, is going to be what we're changing. So again, for example, I'm gonna select my red area here. So I'm selecting all the parts of the image that have this color in them. And then I'm going to be adjusting that hue. And whatever color you drag this to is what color you're changing that hue to. By the way, there's an active check mark above every single adjustment in Lumetri. You can check it and uncheck it to turn it off and on that specific adjustment. But if we do that for our whole curves adjustment right now, you can see this is what we started with and this is where we're at. So, so far we've just brightened it up, added a little bit of contrast and removed some of those skin tones that we don't really want. Okay, so now we've changed from hue to luma. So this means we're going to be selecting parts of the image based on how dark or bright they are and adding or taking away saturation based on how bright or dark they are. Now, a good practice when color grading is you want your pure blacks in the image and your pure whites in the image to not have any color in them. You don't want them to have any hue to them. It's just a good standard practice and it adds a more natural look. Now this would apply more so if I had done those curves adjustment earlier and added 
some colors to my shadows and colors to my highlights. So what I'm about to do isn't going to make much of a visual difference, but it's a good practice. And that is completely desaturating the dark parts of the image and the brightest parts of the image. We're gonna do this by adding one point right about here and one point right about here so that our main brightness areas of the image stay the same. And then right at the end here, drag this all the way down which is all the way desaturated. And then, like I said, you, you're not gonna notice this very much because we didn't add a lot of tint into our shadows anyways. Now finally, we got saturation versus saturation, which is just adding or removing saturation based on how saturated that part of the image already is. So we can add a little bit of saturation to the parts of the image that are already supposed to be a little saturated and just leave it at that. And that is the bulk of our color grading done in curves right there. Now we also have our color wheels here. Now this is pretty self-explanatory. You're basically just adding a color to these areas. So the shadows are the darker parts, the mid-tones are like your skin tone area, and highlights are the really bright area. And wherever you drag this slider, it will add that color to that specific area. So if I wanted to, for example, I could do like an orange and teal kind of look, which would mean bringing my shadows into the teals a little bit, and then bringing my mid-tones and my highlights into the oranges a little bit. I actually kind of like how that looks. Before and after, just adds a little bit of warmth to the brighter parts and a little bit of coldness to the darker parts. Then the sliders next to each of these wheels will increase or decrease the brightness of that selected range. We can bring up our shadows just a tiny little bit. Now we've got HSL Secondary, which stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance Secondary. This is basically just allowing you to select parts of your image based on the color and get a little more specific with it. Uh, I'm not gonna get into this because this is a lot more specific and honestly, I don't really use this for anything. This would be more so if you like had a specific color of something in your background that you didn't like and you wanted to change that color, you could say select the exact color of this object and then completely desaturate it or change the hue to a different color. And then lastly, we just got a vignette. Now, depending on what you're doing, a subtle vignette could look good. I don't like them for my videos though. So that's everything we're gonna do in Lumetri. And then to top it off, because I record my videos in 1080p and sometimes the footage can look a little soft, I like to add just a touch of digital sharpening. And that just kind of makes the video feel higher quality, higher resolution, even though it's still the same. So we're just gonna go back into our effects tab and type in sharpen, then go down to the blur and sharpen tab and choose the one called sharpen. You can also do unsharp mask, which will get a similar result, but I find for whatever reason, the way Premiere renders unsharp mask makes my render take like 10 times as long, and I don't understand why that is, uh, but for that reason, I wouldn't recommend unsharp mask. So we're just gonna drag sharpen onto here. Now you don't wanna overdo this. See if we set it to like 100, uh, that's going to make the image look really crunchy and bring out all of the flaws in my face that I don't want people to see. So we're just gonna set this to, we're gonna do 30. You can see it's very subtle, but it just, it turns the footage from just having like that little soft look to just, it just looks a little crispy. We're going for crispy, not crunchy though, okay? Crunchy is bad, we don't want crunchy, but crispy, good. And there we go, that is it. So we can turn off these adjustments and see what we started with and then turn them back on and there you go. Now, if you're planning on cutting up your clip, like for example, with a YouTube video, I'm gonna have a bunch of little jump cuts in between. It's, instead of applying this color correction to all of those little clips, what you can do instead is go to your project window, right click, new item, adjustment layer, and hit okay. And then drag this adjustment layer onto your footage. Then we're just gonna, we're gonna take our effects from the footage clip and cut them and paste them onto our adjustment layer. So an adjustment layer is basically just an invisible layer that whatever effects you apply to that adjustment layer will just apply to whatever footage is visible below that adjustment layer. So this way you can have one long adjustment layer and have multiple clips underneath that adjustment layer and it'll just be applied to everything. But there you go, that's a pretty in-depth example of how I color grade my YouTube videos. I hope you learned something about Premiere and Lumetri and I hope this helps with your color grading videos. If you've made it this far and you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. It really helps me out. The more people that like this video, the more YouTube will push it out to more people. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can hit that subscribe button. I'm posting around twice a week now, so uh, you can expect a lot of content. Also, all my social media links and all my gear links are down in the description if you want to check any of that stuff out. But that's all I got for you guys today, so thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.